grandpa, make them evacuate four days before they even know what something's going to do. Um, but uh, let's uh, let's all stand. And uh, we're going to sing a little bit here tonight. Let's just want Jimmy to come and lead us. Amen. Hallelujah. we got a lot of folks still coming, and uh, I want to be praying for them tonight. Ask the Lord. We've got a lot of special requests, and uh, let's just ask the Lord to help us. Come on. Amen. Don't sound like it. Is it? All right, let's sing number uh, one, uh, uh, 138, maybe, I think. Sorry about to do it like this. I had a church last week, 139. I have to do it like this every service. So you got it on. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Um, I don't know where to sing That ain't right. Uh, anybody got a word on your heart you want to say while I'm trying to figure out a key here? Huh? 139. I'm sorry. 139. At the bottom of the page, 139. We'll try it right there. Ready? First verse. Years I spent in vanity and pride. Caring not my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me he died. On Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. All right, we got it. All right, ready? By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned. Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Help me now. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Ready? Now I'm given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Sing it now. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Last verse. Oh, the love that drew salvation plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. The mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Everybody, come on now. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Hallelujah. Then there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Thank the Lord. Amen. You may see it. We might try something else here in a minute. Well, it's a blessing to see everybody out this evening. We got a lot of folks still coming. I've got text and phone calls and stuff. And people I had to work. Um, they made Miss Sherry uh, work today. And she texted me and said she's really disappointed she wanted to be here uh, because they're shutting us down today. Beautiful day like this. Uh, I'm, I'm just never ceased to be amazed at how people panic because uh, a storm's coming in four more days. Uh, and that's some money racket or something. I don't understand that. 
Uh, the other day, they said, nothing like this has ever hit the coast of North Carolina. It's catastrophic. And I, I told everybody, just calm down. It'll be a two time it gets here. And uh, no, no, this is the first time in 100 years. And it's going to fizzle out like the rest of them usually do. But thank the Lord for that. Um, what do you think, Brother Mike? What's it going to do? <laughs> flooding, flooding. Well, we know we're going to have a lot of rain. But... Uh, but anyway, uh, it'll. We're not going to get it till Sunday night. Uh, don't look like maybe Sunday evening, Sunday night. So Nate, no worry. Call off work. Call, people panic. Go buy bread, and people take off. What makes me mad is people like Goldie and Jim and them live down there, and they make them leave and spend thousands of dollars. Everybody ain't got thousands of dollars and take a week off work. Well, four days ahead of time. I, I don't like. They shouldn't do people like that. Wait a day or two and then do it. I know everybody's going to panic, but uh, we'll see. Well, I hope, hope everybody's all right. It might be worse. It might be worse, but uh, usually when they hype something up like that, it, it it's people just, you know, do it, they, I don't know why they do that, but it's ridiculous. Uh, there will be some damage. There's no doubt about that. Bad storm like that, of course, there's some damage, but they've quit saying nothing like this has ever happened uh, no worse than 60 years. Maybe water, but not wind. Uh, whatever. Anyway, let's uh, let's pray tonight. Uh, Brother Wayne is on his way back from Florida. Uh, we have a lot of people that's uh, uh, because of sickness. Uh, let's remember. <laughs> uh, I had somebody just call from Florida a minute ago. That's why I was late getting in here. A lady in Florida said, y'all can come stay with us if you need to. I said, look, we're in the mountains. We don't get hurricanes. I said, we, uh, we get wind and rain. And I said, it's weird when people in North Carolina is running to Florida around the hurricane. She said, there's already tons of people from North Carolina looking for excuse to get to go on a Florida vacation. But anyway, uh, most of the stuff that's done in North Carolina is a waste of money. But you ought to be safe and sorry, I reckon. That's what they say. Uh, let's uh, pray for those that are uh, sick. Not able to be here. Seriously, seriously, no, no joking. It is uh, could be a bad weekend for for a lot of people, and uh, very bad for some. That you know, it's going to be right underneath it. Now it's looking more like a little south of a lot south of where they say it. Uh, so let's just ask the Lord, just have mercy and help people, and maybe use this to speak to people's heart, get them saved, and get right with the Lord. That'd be the best thing could happen. And there'll be people down underneath the bed and coffee tables and everything else crying out to God. That's, and that's good. That's a good thing. So uh, let's let's pray that the uh, Lord will get a hold of their heart. Uh, let's don't forget to pray for all the things coming up. Camp meeting will be here before we know it. Um, so we're going to pray for that. And then uh, if you've got something or someone, let's remember Miss Desi. She's pretty wore out and tired. And she don't never miss church. And we miss her when she does. Uh, so if you got something else to pray about, let me know and uplift it down. Let's just all stand right now and uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we bow our heads and our hearts uh, before you this evening, asking you, Lord, to have mercy upon us and forgive us of all of our sins, Lord, and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I'm so thankful that we can come to church. I'm so thankful that we got a church to come to. I thank you for our brothers and sisters that we had to fellowship with. Our Father, we ask you, Lord, that you would help us as uh, as the country gets ready for this storm, getting ready to hit. I pray that you would bless every, every single person, God, in the path of this storm. I pray you protect people. I pray that somehow maybe a revival could come out of this, that churches would get fired up, that souls would be saved and lives would be changed and all kind of good, wonderful things could happen come out of this for the glory of God. Take something bad, make something good come out of it, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd bless all those that are sick, not able to get here tonight, those that are working, those that couldn't be here. I pray you'd bless them. I ask you, God, that you'd look down and bless this service tonight. Pray for Miss Desi. I pray for uh, Brother Wayne traveling and others. Lord, I pray that you'd send us a great camp meeting. God, just bless and your will be done. Do with us and for us what ought to be done here tonight. Bless our fellowship and time together. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can be seated.
I make, can you turn me up on this lamp, please? Amen. Uh, I'm just going to mention a couple things right quick, and then we're going to get our regular music started for our fellowship tonight. Then we'll, I have our offering, let the kids go tonight. Uh, let's don't forget Saturday morning, Saturday morning, buses, everybody be ready for bus meeting Saturday morning. Do not let a little rain Sunday evening stop us from bus route Saturday and Sunday morning. We ought to have a big hurricane day Sunday morning on the buses and have a big crowd. And so, uh, uh, ignore that kind of stuff. I mean, if it gets really terrible, we won't go, but it ain't going to not that early. I don't think. And it's a good day that we could have a hurricane party, maybe Saturday, Sunday morning on the buses. I just don't want that to cheat people out of coming to church. So, uh, we'll work hard, be ready Saturday morning. Let the Lord bless his will be done. And, uh, we're excited about that. We had a big day. Every one of the buses did good this past Sunday. Uh, uh, we could have done better, but we had a good solid uh, lay, a day, and, and that was just a regular day. We're getting ready to have big days in October, fall festival, uh, the camp meeting Sunday. We're going to have a big day out here and cook out hot dogs and have some uh, hay rides and all kind of neat stuff uh, during the month of October. So put that down and don't forget it, okay? All right. And then Sunday morning, be here for Sunday school. Sunday morning, Sunday school. Uh, there, it ain't going to flood here, I promise you. Now, if it floods here, the whole city of Morgan will be underwater. So uh, ain't, uh, it might, bank might wash off, but uh, uh, the, the building might wash off, but it ain't going to be underwater. Not up here, okay? Somebody said, it ain't going to flood at your house. I was like, not my house. It ain't. If it does, the whole town will be underwater if it comes flood at our house. But uh, let's uh, let's fellowship, enjoy the Lord, get our music ready there, and do that right now. Everybody, stand, kids. You are not dismissed. You stay in here. Lights. We take up the offering. Let's let's all stand. Turn around. And be friendly in the Lord. Look at the person beside of you. Tell them say you're prettier than the person I sat beside first service.
Jesus came and made me glad. He's the dearest friend I ever had. He said he loves so. Jesus come, the way is bright, for he is the way, the truth, the life, and it cheers me all when I am sad. He's the dearest friend I ever had, oh, he saves my soul. All right, now well, y'all just remain standing for offering now. Amen. Boy, that quieted you down, didn't it? Lord, that'll kill a, a meeting dead at four o'clock. <laughs> Mention that money. All right, if you didn't get your offering in Sunday, good time to do it. Let's everybody give and honor the Lord. Just had a report of price gouging here in Burke County. Report them, y'all. Guys was over here at the store, 252. Monday, 265 days. Same guys, same tank. Uh-huh, uh-huh. See? All right. Let's everybody give this evening, honor the Lord, and uh, he'll bless you for it. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of giving. We pray now that you'd bless tonight. Lord, open the word of God to our hearts. And Help I said us to it have the first uh, e listening ears and receiving hearts. Oh, God, do what ought to be done now. Bless every church, every preacher, every pastor, anybody, anywhere. Try to do something for you, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can give. Kids, you can go. There you go. Yes. It's not by might nor by strength, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And you can't write it down. You can't put God in a box. God doesn't duplicate himself. All we can do is seek the face of yeah, God man. and say, Lord, we can't do what we in this place, all of us, all of us can leave here transformed by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's our prayer today. No fault was I giving and up dying or where I would go. Amen. All right. Let's get our Bibles open now. We're going to have a little Bible study this evening. And uh, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 23. Uh, since we're a little, little slim this evening, you can help me and we'll interact here a little bit. Let's study the Bible a little bit. That's a good idea. Uh, let's enjoy the Lord. Thank you for being here tonight. And um, uh, let's all just try to get a blessing. Enjoy the Lord. Please, please uh, keep your head on straight. Uh, be here Sunday morning for Sunday school. Sunday evening, you will not get washed away, and you'll be all right. Uh, uh, if people listen to the Word of God like they listen to that, them news men, Lord, it'd be re national revival. Uh, Matthew chapter 23. Now, this, to me, 
is what I'm going to call this. Jesus' toughest sermon ever. The hardest sermon Jesus ever preached was here in Matthew 20 that we have record of. Now, I don't mean that to put that above the ones where he warned about hell fire. Those were the straightest and the toughest. But as far as just a whole scathing, blistering message, this is it. I'm going to tell you something, people. The Jesus that preached this message here is not the Jesus that we're hearing about in, in, the, in the Christian bookstores and on the Christian TV today at all, at all. So I, I want us to take a little few minutes here this, this evening, and I'm not going to give an outline. I'm not going to do it in points like I usually do. We're just going to go verse by verse and look at some things Jesus said. And I'm going to tell you something else. We're not going to take this and aim it toward all the big church. I mean, it'll definitely hit for sure, but we're going to take it for us because we could be guilty of these same sins and probably are. So don't be throwing no rocks at other people as we make sure our own heart's right with God and that we're not. It's a whole chapter about being pharisaical and hypocritical, and that is one of the uh, good night. That's one of the worst things you can do is be a hypocrite. Now, chapter 23, verse 1, Then spake Jesus to the, to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, the scribes, what's, that, what's a scribe? See that word, like scrib, scribble, scri a writer. Scribes copied the scripture. That was their job, to write. And the Pharisee, that was a, like a major denominational outfit of his day and time, most religious people of his day, sit in Moses' seat. Now, what is Moses' seat? Moses, the lawgiver of Israel, Moses sat there all day long and sit there, if anybody had a problem, like this guy's uh, pig got loose and tore his cornfield up, they would come to Moses and he'd judge, well, you need to do this, 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 this. He said the scribes and Pharisees sit in that seat. They're experts on what everybody else should do. They're experts on what everybody else should say. They're experts on how everybody else should live, but they don't do it. That's what the scribes and the Pharisees did. Verse 3 says, all, all, not just part of it, everything. Therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Now, my, 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 my. That, he, he, he said, look, everything these people say you should do, do it. They're experts on how you should live. But don't live like they live. Because they just say it and don't do it. Now that's a trap you can fall into real carefully. Careful if you're not if you're not real careful, you can fall into the trap trap of just of, of saying everybody else should do this and he shouldn't do that and they shouldn't do this and they shouldn't do that. And I'm not talking about preaching. We got to preach against sin, but be careful in our own personal lives of being an expert on what everybody should be doing, but we ain't doing nothing. And they should say you don't do this, you don't do that. Uh, you wash your hands before you eat. You da 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 da, uh, and and they don't do it. He said, "Now they they can tell you how to live, right?" I, I'm thinking of a person right now, kin to me, uh, and you don't know who I'm talking about. Uh, but this person is an expert on how other people should live. She'll, she'll have a dress on up to here, and somebody come in. Did you see that dress she had on? You know, like that. Uh, uh, they, there are men who are saying, there are men who will say, um, what are you doing here? And they're there. <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, what are you doing here? That's the Pharisees and the scribes. Amen. Uh, they're all, they got all these rules. Have you ever known these people? They don't have, they don't, they go to church whenever they feel like it. But boy, if they was to see, you out working in your yard on Sunday evening or Wednesday, and they say, well, uh, I saw him out working in his yard Wednesday night. Well, what was you doing out there driving down the road? See, they have no, they have no rules for their self, just rules for everybody else. Be careful of that. Be careful of being a Pharisee. Be, be careful of people saying, don't do like I do, do like I say do. Be careful of that. I know a lot of people who grew up 
and they, they rebelled bad because they said, my daddy wouldn't let us do this and he wouldn't let us do that. Uh, uh, he smoked, but if he caught us smoking, he'd beat us. He cussed, but if he caught us cussing, he'd beat us. And their daddy said, uh, don't do as I do. Do like, I'll tell you how to live right, but I ain't going to live right. Ain't none of your business. Beware of that kind of attitude. Beware of this attitude of um, laying big loads on other people and you won't touch them with one of your fingers. Look at the next verse. Verse four. They bind heavy burden and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Now, now look how vivid an illustration that is. That'd be like, that'd be like Jimmy and Ann standing here and I'd pile a big pile of stuff on them and say, look, boys, we got we got to just move over on the other side of the building. And I just walk along like this and let them carry it. I won't even touch it with one of my fingers. Be careful of preaching to everybody else what they should do when you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Listen, if we'd live by, if we would live like we expect other people to live, we can be dangerous, wouldn't we? Uh, we got such high standards for everybody. I catch myself doing that. I catch myself doing that. I saw a preacher one time and uh, he was doing something. I, I don't remember what, I do remember what it was. I, and, I, and I remember thinking, well, what's he doing here? And I'm saying, well, you're doing the same thing. You know, I thought, other, it's easy to judge other people. I know what it was. He's in the grocery store on Sunday. And I thought, well, he, what's he doing in here getting groceries on Sunday? Is that the only day he can find me that? I've got a reason to be here. I had to have cough drops or I had to get nose spray. You know, you know that's the way we do. That's the way we do. Well, I, well, my situation's different. And yet we'll condemn somebody else uh, for doing stuff. You got to watch out for that, that pharisaical attitude. You ladies, be careful of judging others how they dress when really you're jealous of them. Be careful of that. Be careful of, I've, I've seen them at camp say, good night, you look what she's got on. And I thought, have you looked in the mirror? I, I, I mean, be careful, men, of saying, well, I bet he, I, I bet he don't do this or that when you do it. Now, don't touch them with one of your fingers. You, you expect other people to do this and do that and fast and pray. I, 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 I made up my mind many, many years ago, and I tried. You may not believe me, but I tried. I try my best not to ask y'all to do something that I won't do myself. I shouldn't ask you to do something that I won't do myself. I know preachers that say, well, it's my job to preach. It's your job to get out and visit and bring people in. I stay home and study and feed them when they come in. I think a preacher like that needs to go to the altar and get his. If I ask you to visit, I ought to be willing to visit. If I ask you to give, I ought to be the first person. If I say, we're going to take up a special offering and give something, everybody really give, I ought to be the first person to throw something in there and sacrifice, right? I mean, that's the way it should be. But we're real. you have to be real careful of expecting other people to do stuff and you don't do nothing. Uh, be careful of that. Um, verse 5, for all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge of their garments. I'm going to read it. We'll come back to that. And love the uppermost rooms at feast and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi. Notice in verse five, everything they do right, they do it so other people will see it. That's a mistake. And that ain't right. And God knows, listen, when we do something, let's, let's, just, all, let's just all admit it here tonight. Every one of us has got a little bit of something in us that when somebody's around, we try to act right or act better. That's just human nature. We do, I do, you do, everybody does. But you know what? If that's the only time you act right is when you're around people, you're a hypocrite. I mean, uh, you, you know what kind of Christian you are? The kind of Christian when nobody ain't around. That's really what you are. The, what you are when you're by yourself is really what you are. Man, that cuts it down a little bit, don't it? 
Listen, they made them Pharisees, son, they walked in. They had that, that phylacteries, those garments down to here, so border, it's been bordered around there. They had the Urim thumbing around there, looked like a looked like a computer, lights going off and on, on their on their chest. They had their guard. They walked in like this. I am so holy. I am so holy. Uh, a couple of hours ago, they was laying over there on the bed in their boxer shorts, uh, uh, looking out the, uh, the window to see if they could see their neighbor's wife. See, translated, they're on their phone watching something on TV. Then they put on that religious garb and come to church like, here I am. Now, look, people, you know me. I think you ought to. I think you ought to wear wear your Sunday best. I do. I think you ought. To, you go to church. You ought to dress decent. And not, if, the, if the best you God's overalls, then that's fine. As long as wash them, make them clean. Amen. Just be decent and clean. But their clothes don't make you holy. Your clothes does not make you holy. I wear a suit and a tie on Sunday because I respect my office. I respect my office. These preachers nowadays, I don't mean to be ugly, but preachers nowadays buy a T-shirt, three sizes, too little for them, and put it up to here. Like they're trying to show their muscles and skinny jeans with holes in them. And, I mean, I got jeans that, 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 that might have a hole in There's nothing sinful about that. But the Congress meet, they don't dress like that. When Congress meets, they don't dress. They wear a suit and a tie. And, but that don't make you holy. That don't make you holy. It don't. Actually, to be honest about it, I've been to a lot of camp meetings and stuff where, where people like Christian big shots walk in like, here am I. Everybody see me? Singing groups are bad for that. I remember one time we went to that quartet convention up in Louisville, Kentucky, I didn't go to it. I was preaching in the neighborhood, and we went over there during the day, took a bunch of kids over there. We sung in the hallway. Man, them people loved it. You wouldn't believe it. It ruck, echoed down through there. And uh, uh, those gospel singers, good night. They come in there. Uh, I like them, gave their videos, the songs, most of them. But, man, them people so full of pride. It about make you sick. I mean, it's just like I'm beautiful. I'm so beautiful. I am so beautiful. That's not what they're singing. That's what they're thinking. And the guy's saying, I, and them guys, Lord have mercy. I mean, listen, you better make sure you don't think your clothes make you holy because they don't. You can have a dress that drags a ground and be full of the devil. Amen. I mean, you can have a grandma dress and no makeup. People might just think you're a hippie. That's the way they do it. That don't make you holy. Now, we'll talk about the flip side of that another time. You ain't supposed to say, oh, well, I'm going to dress like a devil. No, 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 no. Just make sure you don't make your, just make sure you don't think. One Okay, one guy came in one time up at New Manor. There's all them boys. They're getting haircut. And he come in, he had his haircut, and I got mine burnt. Yeah, and the guy hit me, and it's too short. I'm about to see my ball head. But uh, he said, uh, about skint me yesterday too much. But anyway, he come in, he said, the close, he said, the shorter I get my hair, the closer I feel to God. And one of the other brothers said, Well, won't you just shave it then, brother? <laughs> Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. The closer you get your haircut, don't make you closer to God. Now, a man not supposed to have long hair. But that don't make you holy to shave your head. Ladies are supposed to dress modest, but it don't make you holy to have a dress to the floor. I mean, I, that's wonderful, nice if you want to do that. Proud, thank the Lord. But don't ever, don't ever think, don't ever go to revival and look around and say, oh, I'm the only one dressed holy here. Well, you're probably more full of the devil than them that's got short shorts on. You probably are. Amen. That's what the Lord was saying here. Be careful of thinking outward stuff makes you righteous. Be careful of that. Now, when you get your heart right, it will come out on the outside. There's no doubt about that. You, there's some verses that deal with that. Clean the inside, and it'll come out on the outside. I'm glad when I got saved, I got the inside cleaned up first. My outside was messed up. My inside was messed up. But I got the inside right, 
And if you get that inside right, it will come out on the outside. I guarantee it. You get right and stay right, people can tell it on the outside. But the Lord said, if that's all you got's outward, you, you're inwardly full of that. Look here what it says uh, in verse 6. They love the uppermost rooms at feast and the chief seats in the synagogue. They, they love to walk in and, and everybody says, oh, uh, Dr. So-and-so, Dr. So-and-so, uh, we'll, we'll make you a seat right here. Doc. And he comes up. Now, it's okay to treat Dr. So-and-so nice. I don't know that. You should. But if he thinks I have to have special treatment, listen, I'm a preacher. I've been traveling since I was 19. I've been preaching revival meetings since I was 19. That was back in 1800s. And, and I'm telling you, people, I've been to a lot of places and seen a lot, and it just about makes me sick the way preachers think they have to be treated like a celebrity. I know preachers. And I don't, I don't even get to, I don't even ever around the big liberals and the big liberal denominations, uh, uh, the Methodists, the Episcopalians, the Lutherans, the, uh, the, the you know, the, the big shot time event. I'm just around Baptist. And some of the Baptists think I would, like that motel I was telling you about Sunday, they said, I would never stay there. I've heard them say it. They said, I'd never stay there. If they can't put me in a better place than that, I ain't going. You know, the, you know what mine thinks? I think Jesus didn't have a place to lay his head. And then I think the missionaries crawling in them huts in other countries on their hands and knees. But are we better than they are? No. Now, the flip side, we should treat preachers right. When preachers come here, we put them in the Motel 6. No, no, no. We try, if we have a visiting preacher, we try to get them some more decent stay. That place ain't too bad down there, really, for just visitors and camp meeting. It's clean. It, I mean, if, you, if that's too good, if that ain't good enough for you, we probably don't want you preaching here. That's right. I mean that. I, 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 I loathe. I can't stand this celebrity mentality that a lot of preachers and, and Christians, I mean, we're not celebrity. You are not a rock star. We're not movie stars. We're supposed to be a humble servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, willing to get out there and push a car that's stuck in the mud, willing to get out here and dig a ditch, willing to go back there and clean a commode, willing to go, get out here and cut weeds or mow the grass. Willing. Don't, don't get this idea that you're something special because you're a, you're a teacher or a preacher or a singer or a, anything. It said they love the uppermost rooms at feast and chief seats in the synagogue. And to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi. Rabbi means master, means master. Master, they love for people to come and call master. Look, people, I think you ought to respect the preacher. I think if I wasn't a member, I mean, if I wasn't a pastor, I would respect my pastor. I would follow my pastor's advice. I'd follow him and he follows the Lord. I believe in all that. But don't call me master. I ain't your master. I don't want to be called master. I'm afraid they get me in. I'm not your master. I'm a shepherd, and a shepherd tends the sheep and feeds the sheep and leads the sheep. He's not Lord over God's heritage. A lot of these churches, a preacher, but he's like God when he walks in there. That ain't right. That ain't right. It ain't right for the. I know. I know churches where uh, I'll, I'll show you some when we do our church stuff. I've been. I've been working on it. I'm sorry it's taken me some while, but I'm working on it. Or uh, uh, let me see if I can think of an example. Like the Elevation Church down in Charlotte, but not that one. The other one's just like that. And they'll say, we follow the vision that God gave pastor so-and-so. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. God gives a man a vision. He wants to build a church. People follow it. Nothing wrong with that. But they carry it a little too far and start saying, to say no to him is to say no to God. That's too far. That's too far. That's crossing the line right there. That's too far. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. It's only right to follow a man where that man is following Christ. And I want to tell you something, people. You're not obligated, and nor am I asking you to follow me if I don't follow Christ. Oh, Lord Broom, me and him had a deal a long time ago. Oh, Lord was about 75 years old. And me and him had a deal a long time ago. Uh, he's, I said, Brother Lord, I appreciate you going, he going and visiting with me all the time. And here's what he told me. He said, Brother Danny, you stick with God and I'll stick with you. 
And I said, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. No preacher needs to ask any more than that. You don't have to have this undying loyalty that even if he's wrong, stick with him. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Nope, 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 nope. You should love somebody. You should be good to them, try to help them, even if they get off track. But you don't follow somebody where they're wrong. They don't, don't call me rabbi. <laughs> uh, one guy, you, you say, well, how in the world do them Jewish rabbis get around that? One of them said this. He said, uh, it was Jonathan, is it Jonathan Kahn? Kahn? You know who that is? Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Uh, they asked him, they said, well, don't the Bible say not to call nobody rabbi? And they said, we don't call him rabbi. We call him Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Wow. That's how they get around that. Just like call no man your father. Look at, look at verse nine. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Now the Catholic, you know what? Have you ever heard a Catholic say this? They'll say, well, you call your, your father, father. That's what they say. Well, you know why? Because he really is our father. That means don't call a religious leader your father. I never did call my daddy father. I call him daddy. Uh, in, in the South, we say daddy more. Uh, but if you call your, your real father, father, he is your father and God's your heavenly father. But we are not to call any man father in a religious context or in a religious sense. And that's what this whole, that's what all them verses are talking about. A religious leader ain't to be called master and he's not to be called father. That means the Catholic church is way off base. Uh, you know, oh, father, so-and-so, he ain't your father. He ain't my father. He ain't their father. He's not to be called father. That's elevating a man to a place. Listen, did you know the Catholic Church teaches that when the Pope speaks ex cathedra, Frankie didn't like that, but I can't have it. Uh, he's been actually pretty good the last couple of nights. I better hush. Only one time bad last night. He's doing better. Hallelujah. Uh, but uh, did you know what? The Pope, when he speaks ex cathedra, they say when he speaks, God speaks. Holy Father, they call him Holy Father. If, if somebody come in here and call me Holy Father, I couldn't help but I'd bust out laughing. Holy Father, are you kidding? The Holy Father, breath stinks over there in Rome. Lord have mercy, people. Call no man your father upon earth. For one is your father. Look at verse 10. Neither be ye called masters. That's rabbi. For one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. All right. Let's, let's look at verse 12. Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. That's the way to get you want to get somewhere with the Lord. If you really want to get somewhere with God, get to the point where you don't to. Just don't want to serve him and please him and honor him, and then he'll exalt you, but you don't want to be exalted. You know, a man's really great. A great man of God really don't even know it. Just about the time you start thinking you're great, you're on your way down. You better keep this attitude of, hey, I'm nothing but a sinner saved by grace. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I wouldn't be worth nothing. If I got what I deserved, I'd be in hell. I get criticized for that. Some people say I have too negative a view of man. I, that, the Bible don't give a very positive uh, view of us in our flesh. Without God, we're nothing. Without God, we're, we're our throats an open sepulcher. Our heart desperately wicked. Our mind, our, I mean, brother, we're a mess uh, without the Lord. Don't get to thinking you're something special. About the time you do, you're, going, you're on your way down. Okay? Now, does anybody have any questions? Go ahead, brother. You'll notice I never use the word reverend. I've never called a preacher reverend because the word reverend is only in the Bible one time and it ain't talking about a man. I'm talking about God somewhere back there in Psalms. Yeah. I never write reverend. I never sign reverend. People call me reverend. I sort of cringe. I know I know they mean it respectfully and I, ain't gonna, I don't go around rebuking them. But honestly, the word reverend is never applied to a man. Now, doctor... If you get an earned doctor's degree, I don't guess there's nothing wrong with it. I I know a lot of great preachers have them. Uh, Jack 
Dr. Howells, Dr. Ruckman, Dr. all them guys. I think Ruckman had like four earned degrees, like 22 years of college and education. I mean, a man could be a doctor in something. I don't necessarily think that's wrong. But Lord, everybody and their brother nowadays, a doctor, you think the Lord was sick. Uh, a little old guy coming up out of, out of there, got him a doctor's degree online, and he don't even know which manuscript the King James Bible come from. And I think that word, I think a lot of preachers covet that word because they think it's going to make them feel important and be and my open doors in the preach. But I deliberately, I have had, I have had several groups try to confer on me an honorary doctor's degree, and I turn it down every time. Now they did me one down in Charlotte without asking me, and I just took it and put it. I don't even know where it's at because I don't agree with it. I'm not a doctor. I'm an orderly. An orderly cleans up the mess doctors make. That's my ministry. Uh, but I don't think it's wrong to call somebody doctor. I don't guess. What do you think? No, but I think it's wrong to make a man. I, I've seen some, we have a pastor in my house. We call him brother. We call him brother. We call him. That's a pride thing. And, and a Christian, in a, yeah. like a... Now, the flip side is I don't think you ought to call a man like that by his first name. Yeah, brother, pastor, preacher. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. I never did like, I never, and, and don't think, I'm not, I don't think I'm nothing special, but a lot of times uh, uh, somebody running around says, hey, old Danny, you know, and I don't, I don't think they mean it bad, really, but sometimes for the kids' sake, we should address some kind of brother, pastor, preacher, something like that for the kids growing up, just like you do at school. I don't think your kids don't call you first name at school, do they, Brother Mike? Mister. <laughs> Amen. So what if I just come in and say, what's up, Mike? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I am too, but I'm just saying this. Are you a doctor? <laughs> I thought we might have a doctor in our midst. Not even know it. Jimmy is one, ain't you? I conferred one on him. An honorary. Uh, truth is, you get a guy here that builds a great church and been in the ministry 40 years and has a great ministry, he probably deserves a doctor degree, an honorary, more than some little guy that went to college three years and learned three Greek words and a little bit of doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. So... Did they make you call them? Well, what college was that? Well, they probably got a reason for that. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they probably just didn't want the students disrespecting them. I don't know. Try to give them benefit of the doubt. Oh, really? Anybody else? That's a respectful term, isn't it? I think. I guess they heard me say it. Oh, really? I don't know, because that's what I call you, Miss Don. Which Miss Kelly, Miss Kate, out of a little respectful term, like in junior church and stuff. I don't know. Don't ask me. I guess your presence demands respect. <laughs> Do what? Because you're my aunt. You're my aunt from way back. I the nicknames is something everybody in West Virginia has, and it just comes to me. I'm sorry, I don't mean no harm by them. Don't mean no harm by them. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with that. Knock you down a notch or two. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. 
<laughs> good for you. It's good for you. It's good for you. It's good for some of them doctors to get. I heard a guy, heard you, uh, Ruckman told about this guy. He said he was in Florida. This preacher he had on a real light suit, you know, it was 100 degrees. And, and he's doing his first funeral. And he wanted to make sure he done everything right. He made sure everything was right. He's reading out one of them preacher's manuals. He went out there and he slipped in the grave. And it was pouring the rain. <laughs> he fell in the grave. And he's trying to climb out. had mud all over him and everything. Sometimes the Lord lets stuff like that happen. Knock you down a notch or two. Uh, and if he does, he does. Anybody else will say something about that. The whole point of this first part of this sermon is don't, don't think of yourself more highly than you should think. Remember where you was when God found you and remember where you would be by the grace of God tonight if he left you. And, and remember, uh, you, you're no different, no better than nobody else. No, you're no better than anybody of, of another uh, uh, another nationality, uh, another race, another uh, origin, ethnic ethnicity, whatever. Uh, you're no different, no better than anybody in the whole wide world. Now, uh, you can't you can't start thinking, oh, well, the Lord's blessed me, so I must be. No, you're not. It's all by His grace. All right. Let's read a little bit more. We're, we're about done here. 13, wouldn't you know it? But woe unto you. Can you imagine how them got the look on these people's faces? Here's Jesus, the biggest religious leaders of his day. Nobody would dare. It'd be like him talking to the Pope and the Cardinals and everything and the, the religious leaders of our day saying, you hypocrites, you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You neither go in yourselves, neither suffer them that are entering in to go in. He said, good night. You guys, you guys got the door blocked. You won't come in. Won't, nobody else can't get in on account of you. That's pretty rough stuff there, buddy. He said, you won't get in, and you keep anybody else from getting in. Well, I could talk all night about that. Look at verse 14. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You devour widows' houses. Can anybody tell me what he may have been referring to there? What does it mean to devour a widow's house. Yeah. Get right up in the screen and say, now listen, now listen, I know you have a need out there and if you'll plant a thousand dollar seed in this ministry, God's going to take care of you. I know your husband's a drunk, thousand dollars in this ministry and that poor woman sends her social security check into that crook thinking God's going to bless. He devoured a widow's house. Now, do I think you ought to give to good ministries? Absolutely. Do I think a preacher ought to get on and say, if you'll give something to me, God will bless you? No. No, because that ain't right. Now, God will bless you if you'll give to his work. Out of the right motive, with the right heart, God will bless you. Don't, don't think, but you're devouring. They devour widows' houses. You think of the millions of people that send money to these big ministries and never get nothing back, and you never even hear. They some of them write, some of them give their pension, some of them give their life savings, thinking God will save my boy and get him off drugs if I'll do that. I'm telling you what, Lord, I heard about one of them healers. I, I witness. I'll give it to you sometime. I where this guy followed these healers uh, in Florida. He was he was like a journalist, uh, and he was a writer, and he followed these healers around for about a year taking notes, writing down instances of healing, what happened to these people afterward. And you know what he come out with just about every time? Just about every time they were real emotional and you go see them the next week and the same thing was wrong with them. And he said there, there were some genuine healings. God did actually heal some people. But he said there's an old man came in. Somebody brought him in like this. And they set him down, and he got in line. You have to be approved ahead of time and get a card before you can actually get up there and get prayed for in front of everybody. And if you don't get a card, you have to come back the next night and try again in a big, these big tent meetings once on TV. And they call your card, and they finally got him up there, and the evangelist got him up there, and he said, they got these thousand watt light bulbs shining right, right on you. So if there's any kind of movement at all, you know, if you got any kind of shadow or anything, you could tell it. And he said, now we're going to see a miracle here, y'all, a miracle here. And this guy didn't even have no eyeballs. They just had empty sockets. 
And he said, God's going to perform a miracle and put new eyes in this man's head. Everybody shouted. Everybody praised the Lord, you know, and everything. He prayed and prayed. Obviously, nothing happened. And he said, sometimes this, this, this demon can be a stubborn demon. You go over there and sit down and we'll, we'll deal more with this after, after the service. And they hyped it up. Yes, God's going to heal him. Hallelujah. And they got some more up there and they knocked them around and shouted and fell on the floor and everything. It's always something you can't see, you know. It's always something you, uh, you're back hurt. No, I feel better already. You know, all the excitement, you know. And they said when that service was over, all the building was empty. The evangelist was gone out to eat with some people. And they saw that poor old man with his cane, them leading him out. He wasn't a bit better than he was when he came in there. That's what the Lord meant. He said, devour widows' houses. Take advantage of people like that. Make them think. God's going to do a miracle for you if you'll give me all your money. Man, I'm telling you, you'd be better off selling crack at the judgment than to take advantage of poor people and people that really trust the Lord. That's awful. That's awful. The drug dealers, good off, well off, compared to somebody taking people's money in the name of the Lord and lying to them. Anybody, anybody else? I'm going to stop right there on that wonderful note. That's right. You sure can. You sure can. You sure can. And singers and preachers are perfect examples of that. You can see a lot of times a preacher get up here and just be full of themselves, or a singer too. And it's good when we just give all the glory to the Lord, get the flesh out of the way. Anybody else? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd hate, I feel, I, my heart goes out to you ladies because, you know, a lady wants to look nice and presentable. Then you go to the mall and everything there is wicked and it's hard to find something that's decent, but you don't want to look like an old, Old slob, you know, uh, trying to be decent. You want to look nice, and there's nothing wrong with that. I hope you do. <laughs> but, but you know, I'd, I'd hate to be. I feel for you, ladies. I haven't told me all the time. So, brother, Danny can't find no dresses, especially for the young girls that are that are decent. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. And it ain't right. Yep. It's it just your your heart. Make sure your heart is right with the Lord. Your heart. All right, let's stand. God bless you. I appreciate everybody coming tonight. Um, don't miss Sunday morning now, please. Y'all don't let that little rain scare you. It's going to rain between now and then, regular rain, I think, ain't it? Ain't we supposed to get some regular rain? Uh, um, man, I had some stuff I was going to try to do tomorrow evening. Before the, I got all my grass cut yesterday, and it was so wet. Because then they were saying the hurricane was coming Thursday or Friday. I just said that money, and I got a lot more stuck and everything. But I got it cut, thank God. Hallelujah, and uh, but but don't don't miss Sunday morning. You come on, we'll we'll row you home if you have to go in a boat. All right, God bless you. You're at liberty to go. Fellowship, be friendly in the Lord. Everybody, be friendly to one another. Lord bless you. Row 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 your boat on home.